And I'm going to ask you, if you would, to take your Bibles at this time and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This serves as the uh, anchor text, really, for everything that we've been talking about today, what we've been leading up to in the last uh, two weeks as we get started in, in this uh, time. And we started the Christmas series uh, looking at the genealogy of Jesus, and we were surprised to see uh, that there were some eyebrow raisers to be found. And we ended that first Sunday with an important truth. And that was this. In Christ, we are not defined by our uh, old reputation, sins or failures, but rather the righteousness that he secured and gives to all who put their faith and trust in him. And that has been beautifully portrayed by our actors throughout these last three weeks as they've struggled with past sins and what this new identity is like when you put your faith and trust in him. And so that was the first week. And on the, on the second week, we learned that the, even though Jesus came in some rather humble uh, beginnings, there was plenty of awesome events that uh, surrounded his birth. And, and these events were a fulfillment of, of past prophecies and, and provided a lot of hope for the human race. And it is this hope that uh, we now must explore as we bring our series to the close um, what, what, God, what was God really hoping to accomplish by such an amazing event? God coming to dwell amongst mankind. What was the good news that the angels sang about? And here's what I think we can summarize our three weeks together with this. At the heart of the Christmas message is the fact that Christ came to give us a new identity. And as we said... 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 is really the anchor, and it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in other words, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ who came as a man to be, to be born in Bethlehem and then grow to be a man who would give his life on the cross and then would be resurrected on the third day in order that we might have life eternal. Um, if you put your trust in him, anyone that puts their, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new is, has come. And, and I want to just spend the next few moments that we have together unpacking uh, the, this idea of our new identity. Our actors talked about it and talked about this new identity. And, and I've got some helpers, almost like pastor helpers, not Santa helpers, but they're helping me here today. And... Uh, just hold on there a second, ladies. And, and, and I want us to, to, to look at three gifts. And they're going to help us with that. And so I'm going to ask the first gift to come on up here. And, and uh, we're going to uh, see the first gift that we have here today. Would you pull that out? All right. And that gift is I am accepted. Now, that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. That sounds wonderful, but I want to read several passages here for us today, and you're going to see up on the screen, what does it mean when we say this gift, we unpack it, we get this gift called I am, I'm accepted. First and foremost, I am a child of God. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, to all who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Not only that are we a child of God, but we're also Christ friends. I am Christ friend. John 15, 15 says, no longer do I call you servants, Jesus talking here, but I have called you friends. I'm also, I am united with the Lord. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. I'm also a member of Christ's body. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27 says, All the members, referring to a, the human body, though many are one body, so is it with Christ. I'm a saint. Ephesians 1, 1 and several other passages say the same thing to the saints who are in Ephesus. Common knowledge, name for us who are believers. I'm also adopted by God. Ephesians 1, 5 says he predestined us for the adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. I have direct access to God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. So making peace and he might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross. 
I have been redeemed and forgiven by God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I'm also complete in Christ. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. In him, referring to Christ, you have been made complete. I am accepted in Christ Jesus. That's my identity. That's the first gift. The second gift. The second gift is being brought. Come on up. Here's gift number two. Why don't you show them what gift number two is? Nope, you've got to show them a little bit differently. There you go. I am secure. Thank you. So that's gift number two. What, is it, what does Scripture teach us about this gift of our identity? I know now that I'm accepted, but I am secure. Well, here's what the Word of God says for us. I have been justified. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, we have been justified by faith. I am free from condemnation. Romans 8, verses 1 and 2, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I am assured of God's plan. Romans 8 and 28 says, For those who love God, all things work together for good. I am free from the charges against me. Romans 8 verse 31 through 34 say this, and we'll compress that a little bit for time. It says, Who shall bring a charge against me? God's elect? Who will do that? It is God. Who has justified. And then also I cannot be separated from God's love. Later on in that same chapter, Romans 8, verses 35 through 39, it says this, nor anything else in the, all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'm established and anointed and sealed by God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 22, who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. I am confident that the good work that has been begun in me will be perfected. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. I am a citizen of heaven. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says, but our citizenship is in heaven. I have been given power, love, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and self-control. I have grace and mercy in time of need. Hebrews chapter 4 says it this way in verse 16, with confidence draw near that you may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I am protected from the evil one. 1 John chapter 5 verse 18 says this, he who has born, he who is born of God protects him and the evil one does not touch him. I am secure. That's my new identity. I am accepted and I am secure. But there's a third gift. The third gift I want to ask, uh, Amelia, you come on up here now. The third gift here of my uh, new identity in Christ that I am significant. What does that mean? Well, let me just share with you again several passages of Scripture that will help you understand I am significant. First and foremost, we're told in Matthew chapter 5, I am salt and light to the earth. We've been given a mission. It says you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. We're also told that I, Christ says this, I am the branch of the true, I am a branch of the true vine of Christ. John chapter 15, verses one through five says, I am the vine, you are the branches. 
referring to our significance. We're part of his family tree. I have been chosen to bear fruit. John chapter 15, continuing on in that, in verse 16, it says, I chose you to bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. I am a personal witness of Christ. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth or to the end of the earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I am God's temple. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in you. I am a minister of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21 talks of this, and it says this, Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. I am God's co-worker. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, but we work together with him. And the truth that we just saw recently, I am seated with Christ in heaven. That's my position already. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16, or verse 6 says, He has raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am God's workmanship. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says it this way. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. I am may approach God with freedom and confidence. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12 says this, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. And finally, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I can do all things through him. Who strengthens me. I want you to allow that to just kind of wash over you this morning. As we've talked about over these last three weeks, and we've recognized the, the need that we had as human beings, the fact that Christ was sent over 2,000 years ago as a baby wasn't just to be for us to enjoy uh, the festivities. He came for a reason, and that reason is because we needed a Savior. Jesus Christ was that Savior. He came and he was born. He lived and he died. And he died with a purpose. He died to pay for our sins. And he rose again to give us a new identity. And that new identity that we are to live out daily is that we are accepted. We have nothing more to do. We are accepted in Christ Jesus. There's no past, there's no present, and there's no future that will ever change that truth. I'm accepted by God. I am secure. There is nothing that's going to be able to pull me away from him. There's nothing that's going to change my status with him. There's nothing that I can do to mess it all up because Jesus Christ paid for it all and he has made me secure in him. And because of that, I have significance. You see, the Christmas message is really about us becoming new creatures in order that we might take a wonderful message of God, the good news that the angels sang about over 2,000 years, peace on earth and goodwill to men, because we have been made new in Christ Jesus. And so if you're sitting here today and you haven't really understood the truth of the Christmas message, 
we invite you to consider the truth. Jesus came as a baby to live and to die, to give us freedom. Here's the truth. Christ's birth made a new identity possible. His resurrection guaranteed it. And it is our responsibility to live it to the glory of his name. The question is at Christmas, what are we living for? The question at Christmas is, if he humbled himself, became a servant in order to die on the cross for our sins, what are we willing to humble ourselves to do for him? You see, the Christmas message is a call to action. It is a call to live out the identity that we have in Jesus Christ. And that changes the way we interact with our friends, our family, our co-workers. It changes everything. Because who are we? We are a child of God. We stand as his representative to communicate to a lost and dying world the good news that Jesus saves. And we don't have to worry about whether they're going to reject us or if they're going to push us away. Why? Because we are accepted. We are secure and we are significant in Christ Jesus. That's who we are. Now, these things that we've just gone through, they're not, they're not something that I put together necessarily. I've been exposed to it in various sources. One of the most important is, is uh, Neil Anderson's book, Victory Over Darkness, which is a great spiritual life book. But I want you to just take the moment. And if you, haven't, you don't have the notes and you just want to read through that, I want to encourage you during this next week, allow these passages and these, these significant identities of who we are to wash over you and allow you to think this is who I am I am accepted I am secure I am significant in Christ Jesus that's the gift the gift of Christmas so why don't you bow with me in prayer before we close our service with a few more songs father we thank you so much for the gift of your word. We allowed your word to be read and to be spoken, and it's taught us truth, truth about who we are in you. And God, I want to pray for anyone here today who doesn't really know you, doesn't understand all that the gift of Christ is. Pray that they would come to know you. And for those of us who do, who know you and who live a life as a result of what you've done for us, may we live out this identity. May, may we live in the truth of who we are in you. May we not be defined by our past or our failures, our sins, but be defined by who we are because of what your son did for us. Father, pray that we would have that truth ingrained into our hearts and that the joy of Christmas would be because we know we are now new creatures in him. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.